before we start the clock, just as we're going into the advanced manuals, and I know some of you are going to pick up the special occasion manual, there are times that you may be asked to do a eulogy, and I've done two in the last five years. As I thought about, so last time I did a speech, I did the toast, and it, people gave me feedback that I was facing this way, and they couldn't see me, at all very good. And as I thought about a eulogy, you have to be ready that there may be a big room. When my mom passed away, there were over 150 people. They had the room opened. It was triple wide. And the only microphone was at the lecture. And so you are almost forced into that position because you can't be moving here and project your voice all the way to the back. Besides the fact, I don't know protocol if it's cool to be like walking in front of a casket and locking the deceased. So something to think about, and we can research it later. So if I stand behind the lectern, <laughs> it's purposeful and it's intentional because of the fact that, that if you imagine what the room setup would be, that's what it would probably be if you were doing the eulogy. Good evening. On behalf of the Kiernan family and the Veltri family, I'd like to thank all of you for being here tonight to celebrate the life of my uncle, Father John Kiernan. He would be thrilled to see so many familiar faces here to give him the grand send-off to the Golden Gates. For Father Smith, thank you for the comments that you made regarding my uncle, Father John, as a priest. I'd like to share a different side, the side of Uncle John, the uncle. There are a few words that I would use to describe my uncle. He was gentle, he was joyful, he had a love for music, strong faith, and acceptance of other people. When I spoke to my sister about writing this eulogy, I said, you know, Maureen, I, I don't know if I'm going to have enough material. And she said, Marilyn, don't worry. Start writing, and Uncle John will come into the picture and start writing for you. I have to tell you, a eulogy in five to seven minutes will not happen. I had to cut this speech five times already. So my first recollection of Uncle John was that he was a very tall, thin, priest. For somebody who was only four or five years old, he looked like a giant, dressed all in black with the Roman collar and the black hair. You would think you would be afraid of somebody this tall and lean. He was like a tall drink of water. But his gentle attitude and his gentle approach and the way he hugged us in a big bear hug and said, I'm so happy to see you every time he came to visit, was what made him so approachable. He did things with us that our parents would not do or could not do because of the amount of children they had. I would say he was a really cool priest. One thing he particularly liked to do was to invite us all out to lunch, which was a very brave thing. One particular occasion, my sister was in from California and he invited us into Bayville, which was a very, very upscale community. And he was there for the summer filling in for another priest. Well, we loaded up two cars, and there were no seatbelt laws, so there had to be 14 of us that showed up at this rectory. And of course, he realized he couldn't bring us into the rectory, so off he took us to the beach, a block away. You don't take 14 kids in the summer to the beach and not expect that they are going to be up to their neck in water. Even though they had no bathing suits, we went swimming in our clothes. So by the time we got to lunch, we smelled like stinky seaweed. We looked like drowned rats. And instead of saying, we'll go through a drive through restaurant, he spoke very quietly to the hostess, and we were escorted to the back room of the restaurant. And then he proceeded to tell her how wonderful it was that all of these nieces and nephews had come to visit him, and wasn't he such a lucky guy. He didn't ask us out for lunch for a long time after that, though. <laughs> if you ask anyone about Father John, the first thing they would say was music. He was known for his singing, his accordion playing, and in particular, his signature song, Danny Boy. There would always be a call from the back of the room, Father, Father Kiernan, please sing Danny Boy. And by the time he got done, there was not a dry eye in the house. As a young child, I remember nights in our first house where Uncle John would come with a number of other priests and musicians. He was very well connected in the musical world. And they would have dinner. It was like a mini rectory in our living room on a Sunday night. And then they would proceed to go in and jam until either they ran out of songs or they had to be back at the rectory. He was known as a priest with a song in his heart and, in fact, recorded an album with that same title. 
Later on when we moved out east and he couldn't bring his entourage of people with him, I can remember dad and mom and Uncle John sitting at the kitchen table, three-part harmony, singing through a number of songs, and then he would escape into the living room to play the organ where he would encourage all of us to come in and sing and dance for him. He was just joyful, it's how he gave praise, it's how he relaxed, and it, it was who he was. He was a priest that had a song in his heart and was an entertainer. What you haven't heard me talk about here is Uncle John preaching to us, trying to convince us about religion or talk to us about God. And the reason I don't talk about it is it never happened. I think he figured that Catholic school, we were getting enough of the God thing, we didn't need him preaching to us. But he did take advantage when he did weddings for us. He married all of us, 12 kids. He baptized as many children as possible. Unfortunately, he had to preside over a couple of funerals. But there were two days that stood out in the year for me every time. And it was Easter Sunday and Christmas Day. And Uncle John would come out and perform and celebrate mass for us. He'd show up with his altar to go. And you have to imagine this and envision it. He would go into the tap room. Now the tap room was the party room in the house. Piano and TV over here, 12 foot long bar over here, and the altar set up on a bumper pool table. He would make us go through the entire ceremony, he'd make us sing, he'd do his sermon, and when it was over, everybody would swing around on the bar seat and order their first drink. When he thought about family, Uncle John felt that his parishioners were part of his extended family. He had many assignments over the 54 years he was a priest, but the one that was most important to him was his assignment at St. Bonaventure in Jamaica, Queens. It was a predominantly black and Jamaican congregation. And so when he went to that church, it was all about foot stomping, hand clapping, <laughs> amen, hallelujah. And instead of Uncle John saying, we need to do traditional hymns, the next time we went in, there was Uncle John. Foot stamping, foot hand clapping, hallelujah, amen. And he did everything for his people, including hosting a golf tournament to raise funds for the church that was called the Irish Open and went on for 14 years. He took care of the church. The congregation took care of him. As I wrote this, I realized there was so much more that I learned from my uncle as a role model. His actions sp uh, spoke louder than words. His ability to enjoy the family and just celebrate being with us. His faithfulness, which he just lived the faith. He, talk, he didn't talk it, he walked it. And when I think about music, it was come in and when I, you know, when I feel down and out, it's go in and blast the music as loud as you can, sing as loud as you can, dance like nobody's watching, and just let it be the prescription for what ails you. And acceptance, you never know who's walking in the door. Don't make a judgment because you may be surprised how that book turns the pages turn in that book and what those people bring to you. But what I haven't shared is the most important thing about my Uncle John, because he was an entertainer. When I first joined Toastmasters and I had to do my icebreaker, I had started to have a conversation with him all the way from my house to Strayer University. And I was Uncle John, you gotta do this, you have to help me get up there and do this, right? And as I was called for my icebreaker, I said, okay, we're on, let's do it. And over my shoulder I heard, Everything always goes fine the day of the show. Mm -hmm. And so it did. Thank you again for coming and being here to celebrate my uncle's life.